I wanted to get a little bit more done in terms of the building, in terms of the devil strang. Oh, hang on, it's grown. Wait, or well, at least a little bit has grown anyway. Like, more to the point, I wanted to get a lot more done before I actually launched into today's episode so we weren't sat around waiting for all this shit to build and so we won't wait for this to build. But, what has happened? A small herd of thrombos have wandered into the area. Um, no, it's one. It's a single friggin' thrombo. I think we need two minimum to make the weapon, don't we? Oh, that sucks so much. Okay, fine. Um, wildlife. Let's get this boy hunted then. Um, do we want to manually hunt it, or do we want to... Yeah, I, th I think we absolutely want to manually hunt it, right? Send in a squad. Um, basically send in absolutely everyone. Now, I don't think this is necessary. It's not like it's a red dragon or anything. Oh my god, we've got more graves here. If we ever get Bonnet Bigley to that ridiculous manner, um, you know, that, that ridiculous, what is it, manner regeneration rate, that's what I'm trying to think of for the summoning the undead, this is going to be absurdly powerful because we have so many corpses to pick from. Hello, Thrombo. Welcome to Bonnet's Bruh. Um, prepare to die. Uh, what else have we got? We got some magic missiles. Thank you. Please throw some of those out. Um, frost ray. Please throw one of those at it. Let's go for a grave blade. Let's get one of those on the boy as well. What about a nice shadow bolt? I feel like it's also pretty necessary. Take him out. Take him out. Oh my god. He's down. Holy shit, we've already got him. Well, that was... That's actually disgustingly overpowered. Fine. Bonnet gets the final kill, because obviously it is Bonnet Bigley, Master of Wizards, with his brand new cape. Oh my god, I love it. Rescue? No, we want to finish off Thrombo. Why can't he finish off Thrombo? Um, I guess Madalore is going for it. Well, okay, you know what, fine, you do too then. Hall. Now, let me just double check. As I recall, we do need two Thrombo horns for any weapon minimum. Um, obviously, we make it here, don't we? Yeah, Thrombo Axe requires... Let's take a look... Blah, 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 blah. Two thrombo horn and the thrombo requires one thrombo horn. Oh shit, we can make a thrombo, which is obviously insanely good. Oh, okay, so here's the system I was talking about with the arcane capacitors. So Bonnet Bigley, as he's crafting, gets immediately blasted by... Where are you taking that mana weave? Where is he taking that mana weave? Oh my god, I wanted the lockers for decoration. They've been storing stuff in them. Oh shit, okay. Um, clear all, priority low. Copy settings. Can we just select similar and paste settings? Oh, thank God for that. Otherwise, that could have taken a very long time to solve that problem. Oh, my God. I can't believe that they've been doing that. Shit. Um, what are you doing? Did I not just cancel that? I guess it's because he started. He finished. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we, we've actually got that turned off now. Man, that's a real shame. Yeah, so the present houses are more or less done at this stage. We're just waiting for them to deliver a shit ton of wood. So what I've done to make up for that is increased the deliver job for everybody up to level 2. The only people that shouldn't be level 1 in that, as I recall, are the actual builders themselves. Um, yeah, honestly, taking them to level 1 also wouldn't hurt. Basically, it just means people will take, drop off resources so that our builders can get it done. Now, ideally, we'd like to make this into, like, dirt paths or something that looks a, a little run down. Now, getting rid of these trees as well in between the houses definitely would not go amiss. So, let me do that very, very quickly so that they can actually get to these buildings that they're trying to build a bit faster. But I quite like the slums, the little peasant district here next to the church, which we're also in the process of rebuilding. I've added a front gate. Again, none of it's finished. I did want to give up myself a few more minutes before we actually dived in. But the Devil Strand, 97% grown. This is huge because this is what we've needed all this time to build those very, very powerful level spells. The Lich Form for, obviously, for uh, Bonnet Bigley requires Devil Strand. The Warlock spell, Psychic Shock. Um, overrams and reverberates from nearby pawn. I wonder if that would knock people down. That is obviously also a Devil Strand based one. Basically, all the most powerful spells require that. Now, do we have anything else worth... Oh, yeah, so the Summon Poppy, also Devil Strand, turns out. Resurrection. Now, that would be more useful, I suppose, if we actually lose one of our main pawns. So, say, Bonnet Bigley, or even, like, Deep Sea, unfortunately, or, or one of those pawns that we've lost over the course of the campaign, Jimbo 1 through 7. We could have actually straight up resurrected them, um, rather than brought them back as the undead, because the undead seem fairly fragile, kind of unsurprisingly, I guess. Um, what else we got going on here? Summer Minion, teaching that to everyone would be great. I wonder if there's a limit to the amount of spells they can learn. That's the only thing I'm concerned about right now. Now, you guys have been asking me constantly, get the Druid spell, which allows us to regrow limbs. That's definitely going on the list. I also want the, um, what's it called? Revive Resurrection, that was it. We also want Resurrection as well. I think getting those should be the top of our list. 
After we've done that, we should make just loads of these these unfinished books. Then with any... Oh my god, we've got so much Magicite from where I've been waiting for them to just build and waiting for this Devil's Strand to grow. It's insane. And of course, we've got our, our lucrative graphic novel industry there. Um, delivered by Greater Minion. Going to deliver our uh, romance manga or whatever the hell that is. I'm judging by the heart on the front of it. Can't believe this is, this is just really, really fun. The fact that we're selling so much manga to our guests is just ridiculous. Now, one other thing, he actually managed to get enough mana to finish off the staff of the Defender. Made it poor quality because it is Bonnet Bigley. He's not the greatest crafter. Now, unfortunately, we do leave a, a minimum intellectual level, and he is our best intellectual and crafter. Um, the only other person who's even remotely close is sort of by research and see um, crafting. I mean, Potts comes a close second. Maybe Potts could do it instead. 12 out of 20 is crafting, is 8. Bonnet Bigley's is 7. I mean, it's probably not going to make that much of a difference, let's be honest. So, I mean, we're going to let Bonnet do it because that'll at least build up Bonnet's level. That way, when he becomes a when he becomes a lich, hopefully he can still make arcane stuff because it counts as intellectual. It's just affected by the crafting skill, if that makes sense. Um, so, when you go to the builds, it's a job type is, if we find it there. So, skill crafting for some of them. Skill intellectual for others, like making mana weep for some reason is intellectual. Anyway, let's make that thrombo. Um, I'm going to make that first. I'm going to give that to whoever the hell our best shot is because you guys have told me many, many times these things are insanely powerful. Powerful. Right, let's go ahead and prioritize forging that first before we do absolutely anything else. Uh, I assume we butchered the thrombo then. Um, is this thrombo meat? Yeah, there we go. So we've actually already butchered that. Excellent. So we're we can't do anything with the dragon horn, but obviously that's a completely separate mod. It is a very, very powerful weapon though, I noticed. 13.13 DPS is, is probably better than what, so like El Kip, for example, probably better than his current weapon. Um, it's got the homing warhammer of experiments. Oh, 13.20. I take that back. Turns out he's very, very powerful with just his weapon. Now, I want to move these catapults to the front gate, or in fact, we should probably move it a bit further back from the front gate, to be honest with you, because they have quite a large range. And if we can get these things to work, they are devastating. I actually tested one out very, very briefly against the wall, uh, hence why this is massively damaged. Bear in mind, this is reinforced granite as well, so it's a strongly stone and further reinforced beyond the base wall value. Um... Ideally, we want these catapults to be in such a position that they'll hit people coming through these choke points. And I am probably going to double these up. They are embrasures. Now, I'm not sure if you can shoot through two block thick embrasures. I might as well try it. Um, but if you can, that would obviously be ideal because, you know, they're pretty pretty weak right now. What we could do... Oh, you know what? I've got a much better idea. Hang on, Brian. Think this one through. Why don't we instead do something a little bit like this, right? All embrasures. We could put people on the inside. Maybe a row of catapults, maybe a row of murder holes, anything like that. If we get the dwarven bandits again, you got to remember, these boys don't have ranged weapons. So if they're walking through here and we've got archers on either side, they can't retaliate. They can only get shot at. This also works fairly well because the catapults have a, a very narrow alley to fire on because the actual um, AoE from the catapult effect is quite large. Let me show you. So what we would be doing is, is sort of aiming for about here. This is why we need to move it up as well because we can't reach. Uh, we could set a force target for like there. As they walk down through, the chances are we're going to hit them if we have, you know, all of them sat on that force target and then at staggered firing rate. So there's constantly being rocks bombarded to the same place. Now, we've got to, be, you know, be careful not to destroy our own walls here. Um, whoops, I deleted that zone. I wanted to actually cancel forced attacks there. So let's move all this stuff up. I want this to be the sort of fortified front gate from now on. We can also move our, I think the, man, I, th I do think the crossbow are better than the blister. I'm probably going to just decommission all of these for now. Oh, we could just leave them there. That way, if they do break through this front gate and it's looking a bit shit, we could just always get on these, you know, the, 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 what do you call it, Basta level, I've been playing too much KOTOR, the, uh, Ballista, there we go, and fire at them as they come through, because that is quite a nice choke point, we could, we could even put, put, like, another wall here, for example, actually force them to come down through this sort of narrow gap between the inn and the church, might not be a bad idea. So the staff of the defendant just seems to give a passive bonus, I don't think we actually need to do it in battle or anything like that, is it just a melee weapon? What does it do? I think it is actually... Oh! Arcane Barrier. Right, so so that it allows us to cast Arcane Barrier, but besides that, is it just a... I actually think it is just a melee weapon? Um, doesn't matter too much. Like, that, that's absolutely fine. The, the bonus is going to give to his magic, and, he, and if he does get in a melee scrap, we just switch sidearm, which is which is great. Oh, no, it is a ranged weapon, because look. When we switch to a, a melee weapon, it goes into the range section. That's fine. So basically what I'm going to do for a while is just manually drive Bonnet Bigly... Although these arcane capacitors work, they don't replenish at the speed in time enough before he moves jobs, if that makes sense. So, he'll be working on his thing, he'll run out of mana, and then he'll start to leave elsewhere, not giving this chance to, you know, recharge his own mana from the capacitor so that he'll carry on with his job. So, we don't have to be very careful with this, but, you see that, as he's working, oh, there it is, the thrombo. Holy shit, right, drop it on the floor. Right, who is our best shooter? Patches has 10. 
pots is so our highest to be 10.2 patches 10.2 patches is it 10.92 it doesn't matter too much 10.92 patches uh skeletons can't fire because they don't have eyes 11.41 croesus he might be the one to get it 11.41 14.454 with insane Nigel. 16.63 Alkep. Um, yeah, alright, whatever. I mean, he's already disgustingly powerful anyway. Why not make him that little bit more OP? Right, Bonnet Bigley is off to go rest. You know what? I did wake him up early to go and finish that thrombo. Man, this dude just... Reginald Alkep is just absolutely just ahead of everybody in terms of combat, isn't he? I also want to test that this thrombo. Is that not art from Terraria? It looks like the, uh... What bow does that look like from Terraria? Like a platinum bow or something. Anyway, it doesn't matter too much. Um, it's very cool. It looks very nice. Now all we've got to do is actually go and test it out on something. Let's send him out into the world. Is there anything worth hunting? Um, what have we got? Is that an ice elemental? You'll do. Uh, let's get over here. Let, let's, let's give it a shoot and see what this bow actually does. Disappointing if it's just a regular arrow. I mean, seeing how magical and whatnot it was, it would be very disappointing. It does fire what I can only describe as... They look like, a, they look like different arrows. They look somewhat enchanted. They don't seem to do a massive amount of damage, though. Um, honestly, I think we need something better to test on. Let's go for, like, a wild boar. Because everybody sort of knows the HP a wild boar has in RimWorld, right? Whereas not everybody knows what an ice elemental have. Fire at wild boar. Here we go. Uh, well, he missed. Good shot. Oh, man. It almost killed it. Well, I mean, it's almost, you know, made it. Oh, it's got asthma. That was probably a bad choice. Anyway, it, it did a massive amount of damage. There. 5 out of 28 is, is huge. Come on. Take it out. Please, please make my efforts worth it. For fuck's sake, we killed a thrombo for this. And you can't even kill a boar. Okay, you know what? It's fine. It, 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 it'll do. It'll do. So next up on the list, we have Robes of the Archmage, which I'm hoping will look a lot nicer than his uh, God King armor. Again, all the bonuses from it are going to be so good. Even though the God King armor looks kind of cool, he's a wizard. I mean, he is, he's a wizard now anyway. Um, thank you, Mark, for giving your magical energy to Bonnet Bigley. I also kind of like this... Um, Oh, a reindeer's gone berserk. You know who this is perfect opportunity for? Reginald L. Kip and his fancy thrombo. Um, oh, it's not a reindeer. It's a prisoner called fucking reindeer. Okay, you know what? It's still time for Reginald L. Kip and his fancy bow. Let's go big game hunting. The biggest game of all. Man. Um, oh, right. That's not. That's clearly not Reginald L. Kip. Go on. Kill him with the crossbow. Please don't kill him. Is he good? Bio. Beautiful, nervous. Okay, please don't actually kill him. That's it. Shoot the fucking poker table, you fool. Get him, Alcap. Let's see that thrombo in action. There we go. Problem solved. All right, you actually might want to, like, capture him, though. Thank you. So, like I was saying before, I really love the idea of, of Bonnet Bigger, like, feeding on everyone's mana like this to produce himself incredibly powerful artifacts. He's like a... Frog's gone berserk? Why are all my prisoners going so berserk? Well, luckily, we've still got somebody in there to go and, uh, to sort them out here. Um, are they going to be automatically rescued? I actually have no idea how the prisoner system works. Uh, you'd assume so? Is anybody going to rescue him? Okay, right, Jim Morrison, capture, incapacitated refugee quest, arsony, okay, um, <laughs> turns out to be a pyromaniac, arsony says there might be a danger there, a 28-year-old charlatan, you're not really convincing me here, pal, honestly, not a big fan of this, arsony charlatan, um, uh, trying to incapacitate a refugee, threats unknown, what else have we got nearby, we've got that outpost that we've had for about a thousand years, um, we get a shield belt, wait, a shield belt, as in the base game Rimworld one, masterwork, um, it's protected by 13 huskies. The 13 huskies in the shield belt. Um, that one's got dwarf... Yeah, we know about that one. We, we need some better missions. We need some, like, fresh missions, eh? Next time we get some visitors, I'll see if they've got any quests. Because all these are a little bit crappy. Probably not going to go and rescue Arsony, I'll be honest with you. Um, we've already got a lot of people that are all ready to manage and house before we sort that out. So, I'll deal with that first. So, its shield actually counts as sort of like the way... Base game in world works is with a shield and a ranged weapon. You can't use it. So we're going to go ahead and drop his War God's Crest. And that should clear that. Now, can we use the staff now that I've got rid of that? Oh, there we go. It fucking is a ranged weapon. Is that Wild Boar? Uh, wild Boar 2 is a herd animal. So it's, it's a little bit misleading. Let's see what the staff does then. Um, oh, right. There we go. Open fire. Sorry, Wild Boar. Oh, my God. It's like a magic missile. Oh, that's cool. Wait, did it, did it use mana? Keep it. It doesn't use mana. It's massively inaccurate. It might be down to their shooting stat. At least you'd assume it would be, as it's a, a ranged weapon, right? Um, fire rate, 240 RPM. Range, 40. Yeah, melee damage per second. It does do melee damage as well. That's very cool. Um, accuracy is questionable at best. Obviously, it is in the hands of a dude with less than seven shooting there. Those are good. I'm kind of tempted to give most of my mages those, because not only will it obviously boost their offensive mage powers, but it seems like a fairly all right weapon as well. 
Nine points available, and I've just noticed as well, 183 mana. Now, it's 100 mana base, and we've only upgraded his clarity. Spirit is the thing that increases the maximum mana cap, so this dude is doing really, really well. So we'll give him the clarity. Um, is it worth hastening the undead? Seems we have four of the damn things now. It's going to give them plus 15% movement speed and action speed. Seems very, very valuable. Um, powered creation, what does that do? Increase the number of undead that can be created by each spell per one level. Oh my god, so we can create five undead at level three. I mean, obviously, I'm going to do that. We can basically raise an army. More importantly, if we kill a big group of people and then hit them with this spell, they're all going to be raised. So if, if, say, we need an emergency army during combat, if we killed a big group with a catapult and there's another wave coming in behind them, you just raise the ones at the front, they fight and die for us. Who cares? You know, they're basically throwaway and dead at that stage. The last episode, I asked you guys for names for all of the characters. Now, the way I record things, I upload all as RimWorld is uploaded so it's 8 p.m my time i generally record another video around midnight my time as well so the video that you guys saw last is only gone up four hours before i started recording this one so not everyone's seen it yet and i want to give everyone a fair chance to get their names in so next episode is when we will uh rename all of our colonists and our villages hopefully you guys can understand why i'm doing that i don't I just want people to miss out because they're you know not awake at midnight my time for example or if they live in you know asia or other parts of europe disease infection Kocha, Kocha Bonner has gotten sick from it. Who is that? Oh, one of our prisoners, right. Um, well, we could just send in Insane Nigel Doctor Supreme, and he can get all these people patched up. Oh, shit, one of them died. Oh, my God, what am I doing with these? Okay, it wasn't a um, magician or wizard. Magician. I mean, a little disappointing if, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to recruit these arcane masters with magic missiles and stuff, and then Darren Brown turns up. Right, there we go. You're good as new. Let's get everybody healed up as quickly as possible. Um, stem the bleeding, you know, reduce the chance of infections, that type of thing. And then, yeah, we've got doctors all over the place. I don't know how this has happened. It's just because they're constantly fighting. I guess they're a little stressed out being in here, eh? Well, they're sleeping on the literal floor. Also, I don't know why I built them poker tables, but not beds. In hindsight, that was a really stupid idea. Um, we get that fixed one up in a second. I assume you still have the air. It didn't cure the infection. Um, I wasn't really expecting it to, but it is worth just dealing with everything else. Let's get you cured. Kangaroo seems to just be lying on the floor. You're right. Brain has been touched by shadow. Can't move. Oh, even with the elvish bread, he can't move. The consciousness is too poor. Moving is, is gone. Man, that's giving him 10% bonus. Okay, well, he might as well just be sent to the organ farm at this stage. Oh, shit. Here we go. Making Necromancer spell, Lich Form. Is it worth converting Bonnet right now? Uh, what else we got? Transfer mana. That seems pointless. I mean, read? We'd have to use it, right? Lich Form. Transforms the Necromancer into an undead Lich, gaining immortality existence and immortal existence and arcane power. Once used, there is no return. Maximum mana plus 50%. Mana regen plus 50%. Hang on. Does that mean that we cannot raise... Can we raise like 10 more undead from that? Grants unnatural immunities to diseases that resistant to damages, health regeneration, and no longer needs food or rest. Gains the ability flight and death bolt. Can no longer perform work involving caring, social animals, firefighting, artistic, dumb labor, or skilled labor. I don't care about any of those. C well, can he do those anyway? Dumb labor or skilled... Oh, skilled labor is crafting though, isn't it? Oh shit, so you basically stop doing everything but research. Um... Um... Who am I kidding? Of course we're going to turn him into a goddamn lich. What a ridiculous question. Oh... Oh, there we go. Bonnet Bigly now has access to Death Bolt. Um, 233 mana. Uh, Bonnet, are you okay? I want to I see the man behind the mask. Um, drop it. He's exactly the same. Hooray. Perfect. Um, I guess he's just like an actual lich now. That's kind of cool. Um, I was expecting a lot more, you know, like, um, I don't know, I guess like an Elder Scrolls witch. A uh, witch. Lich, where he was kind of a bit more spooky. Oh, he can fly. I mean, that's kind of cool. Little gyron that moves the camera around, but that's, that's kind of cool nonetheless. We can raise a whole army of undead, though. Especially when we've got all this other stuff finished. And I assume he now actually can't do, um, yep, basically everything. He can research, he can hunt, he can do magic. Wait, can he not? Can he do nothing here, then? Because this counts as... He can make hyperweave, I believe, and that's about it. You know what? That's fine. Honestly, we can now get this guy uh, crafting all sorts of spells and stuff instead, which is fine, because that requires um, intellectual. Now, it has a skill requirement, but as long as he fits, you know, to crafting, he can craft certain spells. Bonnet Bigly, Lich, Necromancer Supreme, can still improve relations with our visitors. Oh, he offended them. Probably something to do with his, you know, decaying face and ethereal essence. 
Um, can't imagine a lich would make for a good hotel owner. Anyway, so Potts is now been promoted basically to uh, head mage crafter. He's been uh, he, he's taken over. I've I've given him access to all of these doors. I'm also going to expand this room because they keep hauling the bloody uh, stuff over here now that we've uh, destroyed some of these shelves. So I want to bring the what is it called mage weave. Something like that? Uh, mana Weave. There we go. So I want to bring Mana Weave back over here just to help expedite things a little bit because it is taking a pretty serious amount of time. So let's get this dealt with. Hopefully we can get the rest of these artifacts done. Now I'd like, to, obviously, every wizard to have one of these powerful artifacts. Um, but it seems to be taking a hell of a long time. I didn't realize that it has such a high... Um, a, such a high magic requirement, I think is probably the best word for it. Oh god. I take back everything I said. Um, Bonnet is now fighting with one of the guests. Please don't kill her. Oh, and then he immediately offended her afterwards. Oh, but he is charming certain people. Okay, so we know he's not completely useless at this. I was going to say, otherwise we'll have to forbid him from ever going to the inn. Um, apparently bitter. Bite human teeth. Tended. Excellent. Nice. They were amazed by your hospitality. I guess it's the bite marks on the neck there from Lich Lord Bonnet Bigley. For the love of God. Right, so what can we actually get this dude to do? So Rickpot still needs 14 of something. What does he need 14 of then? Regrow limb. Um... He needs 14 intellectual. He's actually not too far off. I believe he's level 12 right now. Uh, top point two seven. So we could even just set him to research solely by himself for a while. Um, just to try and boost him up. Because we do need ourselves some sort of scroll crafter. Can anybody do it? Um, we need 14 intellect. Okay, so we've got... The Jew is okay at it. Um, let's see if he can actually craft these things. No, skill required for crafting. Okay, fair enough. Um, anybody else with over 10 intellectual with fairly alright crafting? Um, turns out... It's just pots. It is actually just pots. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. 14, isn't it? Yeah. So so just pots. You have to level them up a little bit with some research. There we go. So with two arcane capacitors, it actually gives a ridiculous amount of mana. I've just had him drain the entire thing. They need to make a little bit more mana weave, but this should work perfectly. Sorry, is that 5,000 magicite? Jesus, we've skipped a lot of time. And to be fair, we've, we've, we've had quite a lot of undead constantly working in the mine for what has basically been what like five episodes now so it's not really much of a surprise that we have that much however you gotta remember that's still only like 10 gems um and even then it'll just come out with a random class so it it, it is very expensive we, we do have a lot of gems but the, the mod is so expensive that this isn't going to go very far oh shit as if i forgot to take bonnet bigly off of every job that he hates doing so he is in like the worst mood i've ever seen right now okay so if we go and te check his mood tab in a second i imagine it's going to be an absolute state probably one of the worst mood tabs i think i'm probably ever going to see in rimworld because it's all of these are going to stack um and then even when we turn it off it's still going to be assigned to x job for x amount of hours so we go now we go needs <laughs> oh good I really, really hate growing things. I really, really hate mining. Oh, good. No, that's fine. There we go. He's, he's a bit happier now. Was assigned to hauling, crafting, mining, growing, wardening, handling. Yeah, that's still not a good thing. Although, to be fair, hang on. Sanguine? Really? A natural bonus from the sanguine. Oh, right. He was sanguine, wasn't he? I guess there's no reason not to make just about all the research happen now, seeing as Bonnet Bigley really has nothing else to do with his life besides be very, very intimidating and raise an army. I mean, we could just go to war. We're basically in the end game at this stage. Um, not not literally. We're still in the sort of mid game for him, but the end game of where where our goal was, right? We can now raise basically an undead army at command once we've got them outfitted with all this gear, which is going to take some time because unfortunately just the mana cost of this is unbelievable. When we've got that, I'm just going to dig up all the mass graves, spawn a massive army in, and we're going to head to a faction base and see what type of damage we can do. A great heresy has befallen. As I asked them to replace the carpet, they've been mining away the god rock. The one that fell at the original start of the series, the compacted plasteel. Hmm. I feel like whoever's been building this carpet needs to be killed immediately. Who was it? Who's who's on who's on construction? Right, fess up, let's see here. So it was either Maddle or the Shipwright, Patches, Mark, Jim Morrison, or Moss. It was one of them. One of them has mined away the god rock. The, the, the rock that... Is... I think we found our culprit, boys. Oh, you fell right into my trap. Hook, line, and sinker. Oh, Dwali. Paul Dwali. Death by firing squad is the only thing befitting a man who dares to mine the god rock. Bring, bring him to the square for execution. Summary execution. Move everyone over. Even, not the undead. Fuck the undead. We, we don't need to see those things. People, Less people know the better about the undead. Dwali. I hope I hope nobody wanted to name Dwali sp specifically. Dwali for the crimes of uh, destroying Bonnet Bigley's God Rock. You are sentenced to death by firing squad. Um, line up, men. 
Line up. That's it. Line up. Line up. Line up over here. That's it. Uh, Jimbo. Jimbo has a crossbow. Jimbo can also be part of the firing squad. There we go. Line up. Go here. Thank you. Uh, let's move these two here. I want to make sure we get a nice, even coating. Uh, Moss, because he doesn't have a weapon, can be the one to declare the, uh, the, the, the gunfire to start the fire. Right, here we go. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> no, wait, hang on. Put, it, put him here. Moss, stand here. On your count, men. You may open fire. Three. Two. One. Kill him. This is this is not the most <laughs> This is not the kindest of deaths, I will admit. Oh fucking Bonnet, just take him out, my dude. Bonnet, take him out. He was sentenced to death. Watching for targets. Bonnet, take him out, my dude. Bonnet, for the love of God. Okay, somebody somebody put him out of his misery. Um right, that's it. Hit him with the magic. We're gonna hit him with every piece of magic we have. I can't believe it. He mined the god rock. There is no greater greater crime in the society of Bonnet Bigley. Sonic blast him. Take this fall out. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Shadow bolt. Shadow bolt in my son. Um, you've obviously fired your grenades off, so that's pretty late. Magic missile. Patches uh, can't really do much. Moss can't do much. Bonnet Bigley. Uh, Fog of torment. Take take him out. Oh god, that's quite a large area. We'll fire it there. Um, ability failed. Target was not visible. That's fine. I'm sure we've got enough going on here. Goodbye, Dwali. Dwali is gone. Crime has been paid for. The God Rock. Has been redeemed. And of course. As the ultimate insult to Dwali. Uh, we're going to bring him back to life. No we're not. Target was not visible to Bonnet. Hang on sorry. We've got to move around the capacitor first. Uh, we're going to bring back Dwali. Welcome. You will suffer in, in death as well as in life. For the heinous crime. And then let's restrict him to uh, Undead Burg as well if you don't mind. Uh, dwa, 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 Dwali. Now I'm not saying there is a racist occurrence happening here. But I'm just saying. Everybody in Undead Burg is a dwarf. Uh, wearing the dwarf, does that seem he's trying to wear Bonnet Bigley's helm? You're lucky you don't get executed again. So I've basically cancelled, uh, Pots from making any more minions, because that is draining a shit ton of his mana. I mean, it's a 40% mana cost, and that's actually a fair amount of forging we can get done. 72. I wonder if it's one-to-one, -one, so I wonder if the work, uh, is, is the equivalent of the amount of mana that you'll need. In fact, I can probably test it now, eh? Um, so let's stand here. So let's wait for the capacitors to completely, uh, fill up Pots there, so they are not shooting any more mana. 56, right? There is 72 left. So we're expecting, what, 18 left on this, if my theory's right? Oh, no, he finished it long before then. Um, 31 and it's finished. So actually, it's almost like per one work, you're spending one mana. Now, I don't know if things that require bigger workloads. I mean, it's probably not a ratio of one to one or one to two. I I'm pretty sure it's not like that at all. Bonnet Bigley, come and get your mana weeb robes. Oh, look at this man now. Holy shit. It still looks terrible. I still think it looks terrible. There we go. Uh, now, if we go to his gear tab. Nice. Yeah, no, that looks that looks just atrocious. But you know what? I'll take it. So his mana recovery rate, 263. That's absolutely insane. When we get some of these gems on this armor as well, Bonnie Bigley is going to be completely untouchable. While on the plus side, we can now make a Paragon's Helm out of the God Rock. So that's not too bad. From God Rock to God King, he can literally wear the blessing on his head um, as part of this Paragon Helm. Obviously, it's very, very powerful. Now, I apparently set up last episode or the episode before that to use Plasteel. So I guess that's kind of solved itself. I promise it was no intention of mine. Please do not execute me by firing squad. So I have the God Rock mind. It was purely um, a miscommunication between Dwali and myself. However, it was definitely his fault and definitely needed to die by firing squad. Man, look at this absolute mana drain. Oh my god. Oh, you know what? He's not too far off of being able to finish that. I think if he lets himself recharge again, um, if people want to come and top up these capacitors anytime soon, that'd be pretty handy as well. Um, can he not finish that off? Uh, too heavy. Cannot. No, he can't. He needs, uh, I think he needs like 50 mana to at least even start working on these things. Um, can we change the, have I changed the fuel level on both of these? I have, yeah. Unfortunately, nobody has any mana left by the looks of it. What about Bonnet? Bonnie, you've got so much mana. Come and charge these up for the love of God. Here we go. Croesus and Patches giving their energy to Pots here so we can finish the Paragon Helm of the God Rock. Here we go. Bonnet Bigley, your final upgrade for now. Don't think we'll have enough mana to get anything else done this episode because this has also taken uh, quite a ridiculous amount of time. Here we go. Boom. Um, yeah, that's definitely a downgrade, isn't it? I mean, the other one looks just infinitely better, but this one also gives him that, that massive mana regen as well. So, Rush, if you can't see, can you see, like, all the stats? Is that included? Is mana regen included on this, uh, on this screen? Um, 
Ma mana mana regeneration? Ma mana regeneration. I don't think it is. I can't see it. Um, it's a real shame because it'd be really nice to know that because then we'd be able to work out how many undead we can actually have raised at once without, you know, risking anything. Oh, shit, against the straight lich. Oh, it does give plus two intellectual as well. That's also kind of cool. There we go. Um, oh, it says here, right, mana regen, 272% is just absurd. What an insane amount of regen. Now, I assume the energy regen is affected by, um, is that affected by the undead you've got raised? So will this number lower on this screen the more undead we have? Well, there's only one way to test it, right? And that's to go and raise a shit ton more undead. So what did that last helmet give as well? Um, let's go gear and just double check the information on that. Uh, energy cost minus 5%, plus 15% class XP, plus 5% max energy, and plus 10% arcane resistance. So a bit more of a defensive thing uh, rather than a sort of mana buffing thing. But let's go dig up a grave and blast them with some undead energy and raise a whole new army. This is going to be cool, because bear in mind, we haven't cast level 5 of this, uh, sorry, level 3 of the Undead Raising spell yet, so we should hopefully get 5 corpses. Let's see. Alright, so let's go open grave. 3 out of 20. 8 out of 20. That's a good one to shoot, I think. So, undraft bonnet. Open mass grave. There it is. Draft. Head over. Raise undead. Kaboom. Just like that, we got five new people. And he can now train a new magic skill. Um, I guess we'll go with... I mean, focus seems a bit pointless to me. Um, I mean, spirit seems okay. Uh, what's his clarity right now? Does it... Oh, it, does, it shows a breakdown on spirit, but it doesn't show it on... That's a bit of a shame. Um, should we just summon some more? I don't think he's really got the, the uh, mana regeneration for it. Now, we can always double check here. No, energy regen is still 272%. I think we need to keep a close eye on this. If this starts going down, then we know we're going to lose some undead here. But that's very, very cool that we've got this quite sizable undead army now. Oh my god, this is this is getting a little bit out of hand. So we've got Moss, and then we've got to change. Let's see here. So you're new, you're new, um, you're new, and you're new. So there we go. Those boys all need restricting to Undeadberg as well. Um, Bonnet should be unrestricted because he's he's technically undead and never needs to sleep, so he doesn't need to worry about that. Um, Undeadberg, Undeadberg, Undeadberg. Yeah, no, this is working pretty well. I'd, I'd say this is going basically just as planned. Let's, let's bring together the whole undead army to come, and, to come and pose near Bonnet. It's a good start, but it's still a far cry from having that massive undead army I'm looking for. Hopefully with a few more magical artifacts here and there, and with some all those enchantments about the gems, you've got to remember, are going to be massive. We're going to turn this into an army 20 times the size, I guarantee it. And then the faction base mod, we've got that installed, so the faction base is actually pose a threat. It's going to be very, very powerful, hard to surmount. We're basically going to be, uh, you know, we're going to be the Uruk Siege and Helm's Deep at this stage. It's going to be that type of conflict, I think. We can leave this one here for today with this fantastic shot of Bonnet and his army. Thank you all for watching. Again, names should be in next episode. And I guess, um, thanks to me putting it off for an episode, we now get to name 10 people rather than the sort of four or five that we had last time, uh, including Dwali the Traitor. So this is a pretty cool setup. I really, really like this. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it too. A big shout out to all of the insane top tier level patrons, including Zachary Harris, Harik, Sean Thornton, Haydock, Sidini, Tim Bragg, Loras, Vacuous Backers, Josh Lindeen, Tesla, Tyler Birch, Jacob Alexander, Fenton, Powers Presley, Asuna Kirito, Logan Thorne, Conspired T, Jimbo, Orkswell, Fukundo Vasquez, Tom Terrier 18, Average Gamer 419, Escape, and Jackson Whitman. Thank you all for your support. The Insane Tier Loves on Patreon. It is much appreciated. You are keeping the channel going. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying Bonnet Bigley's. Um, very sudden transformation over the course of like two episodes, I think we can agree. And a big shout as well to Nathaniel Lindbergh, Brandon Mintoniak, Euphrates, Jack Allen, Betamus Max, Panther Pearl, Gabriel Vanders, Luan and Thomas, Nathan Flores, Euron DeVries, Haji Dumas, Alpha Scuff, Kevin Saunders, Don Connie 27, Zet McDougall, Joseph Beard, Jordan Camel, Harry McGowan, Chris, Surthal the Swede, Acero, Nick, Will Wade, Noah Gallimore, Fraser Brennan, The Insane Pickle, and Adam Person.